Welcome to our course on Frank Lloyd Wright and the 20th century. My name is John Lobel. I'm a professor of architecture at Pratt Institute in Brooklyn, New York, and I studied architecture at the University of Pennsylvania with such figures as Louis Kahn and Robert Venturi, and I wrote a book on Kahn's philosophy titled Between Silence and Light. So, why a course on Frank Lloyd Wright? He's generally regarded as one of the most important American architects. First, his buildings are simply beautiful. To this day, people who live in his houses find them a joy to live in. But then also, Wright was totally immersed in some of the major movements of the 20th century. We see relationships between his work in Cubism, of Picasso, the abstraction of Mondrian, the stream of consciousness of Proust and Joyce, and the relativity of Einstein. And we associate Frank Lloyd Wright with organic architecture, which involved a deep integration of the building with its landscape. Wright was born in 1867 and died in 1959, so he lived through the latter part of the 19th century and the entire first half of the 20th century. If we look at his work, we see in his first house on his own, the Winslow House, there are stables in the back. And then in 1956, he did a project for a mile-high building to be powered by atomic energy. So we see this huge technological span that Wright lived through. Over 500 of Wright's buildings were built throughout much of the United States. And we see his career beginning with the prairie style in the early 1900s. And here we see his low sloped overhanging roofs, massive chimney core, interpenetration of inside and outside, and the open plan, which is going to characterize much of the architecture of the 20th century. In the 1920s, Wright did a series of concrete tile houses in California. And we see a contrast between Wright's work and Corbusier's, where Wright shows us how he put the concrete together. Corbu uses stucco to cover it over. Wright's career was long. He lived for to the age of 92. So he could go as long as a decade without work. And then after such a drought in his career, in 1936, he did Falling Water, which relaunched his career to international acclaim. Around the same time, he did Johnson Wax headquarters with a total reimagining of the modern office workspace. And finally, in the 1950s, Wright did a series of projects summing up his approach, as we see, for example, in the Guggenheim, which is right behind us at this very moment. Now, in our study of Frank Lloyd Wright, we're going to see strong relationships to concerns we have to this day. Wright used new materials, in his case, the industrial materials of the early 20th century, such as port in place concrete. And we can think now, what are the new materials that we're confronting in our architecture today? Wright's work paralleled the decentering of the family as it moved from the small farm into the American suburb. What's going on with our families today? And how is our architecture today going to respond to that? We see a strong relationship between Frank Lloyd Wright's work and the abstract art, for example, of Mondrian. How does our architecture today relate to the art of today? And finally, we see that Frank Lloyd Wright's work was dependent on the motion of the observer, just as the motion of the observer was crucial to Einstein's relativity. As our 21st century further unfolds, we can ask, what can we learn from Frank Lloyd Wright as we confront our new technologies and our new social issues? So, in our course, we're going to see how Frank Lloyd Wright created modern architecture. We're going to see his work culminate in the Guggenheim Museum right behind us. And I look forward to your accompanying me through Frank Lloyd Wright and the 20th century.